What's the difference between a maker and a solutions architect? I've got an action-packed video and let's just jump into it. Makers are like pilots. They're specialized in one or two technologies and they're told where to go and how to get there. Solutions architects are more like getaway drivers. Your customer tells you the destination, but you decide how to get there. Sometimes the customer tells you how to get there, but you're the expert. You decide if that's a good idea. Unlike a maker, you don't need to memorize every cool little feature that the tool does because your job is to avoid the big pitfalls, stopping them from going in the wrong direction. Your job is to have a high level understanding of the architecture and how all the pieces fit together so you can get them to the right destination. And if you're really good, you get to choose the destination slash what their business actually means. Maker is someone who knows a lot about one or two technologies and they've become an expert there. However, Solutions Architect knows a little about a lot of areas. I know I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this where some people are like, hey, I know a bunch of technologies, but I'm not a Solutions Architect or, oh, I know Solutions Architects who specialize. Okay, we could also argue the difference between a senior consultant and a Solutions Architect. It ranges from company to company but here are the three most common patterns I see. There are typically three kinds of solutions architects. The ones that work in pre-sales, which means they help the sales team, they're more like a sales engineer. They usually know the most about the features that really sell the tool. Post-sales is kind of the opposite. They are really have a lot of expertise in a few certain technologies, and they're there for the really tricky problems. They usually create a lot of proof of concepts, and then they move on to kind of the next project. They're called solutions architects, but I've noticed they usually kind of specialize in one area. The third is more of like a technical director role. They understand how all the systems connect. They're really the advisor to the company. And here are the most common attributes I've seen across solutions architects responsibilities. They usually have the 10,000 foot view. They have the end to end understanding of how all the applications connect. They also understand the integrations between how these applications are gonna to talk to each other, particularly in data migration or sync. Here they can work with other makers or specialists in that area to get some console or advice on certain aspects. They also understand why to use a certain tool over another one. They're able to choose the right tool because they understand best practices. They understand points of scalability, reusability, solid principles, which aids in picking instead of just having to be a specialist in everything because who can be a specialist in everything except maybe Reza. This responsibility kind of ranges, but like governments, uh, governance, admin, ALM, sometimes that's relegated to the DevOps team, but a lot of solutions architects take this role. Nonetheless, they are all responsible definitely for security. This is probably one of my favorite skills and the one I might get yelled at, which is they know when not to use the power platform. It is amazing. But there are cases when other external tools are a better fit. And the most resounding trait that all solutions architects have in common, well, it's in the name. They think of solution. They're not just obsessed with the tech, they're business-minded, and they consider the objectives of the business whenever they design their architecture. And there's one more responsibility all solutions architects have. They have to die a gram. I honestly sometimes spend more time in Visio and Lucidchart than I do coding anything. If diagramming is a huge part of your job or if there's anything I miss in terms of your solutions architect role, please leave it in the comments. I would love to hear about it. If you're interested in becoming a solutions architect, a lot of people take the PL600. If you're looking for more training and a hands-on experience, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I've got all kinds of ideas. You can also follow other solutions architect and really creative developers on LinkedIn. If you are doing a lot of diagramming, check out David Wyatt's article on how Power Automate helps automate the diagramming process. Thanks to everyone who gave me their two cents on making this video and what their definition of a solutions architect is. I also like John Russell's article on this topic.